All right. The breakthrough disruptive technology I wanted to share with you to kick things off. <laughs> so the question is, you've got something like this. It's a staple of our lives. How do you innovate that? What do you do? You go from two ply to three ply. Can you make this a disrupt disruptive innovation? Is it possible? Well, the group at Kimberly Clark that's responsible for innovation is a cross-functional team. They decided to try to figure that out. They decided to look at how do you marry the insights about consumers and, and how they're interacting every day in their bathrooms with technology. So one of the things they did, they went out and they visited, you know, they did ethnographic research. Now, how many of you have kids? Kids, kids, okay, a lot of you. Anybody experienced that ever? Yeah, a few of you, yeah. I know I did, a couple times over. Well, when you look at what that is, you kind of think, well, toilet paper company, you kind of want to encourage that maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but the idea was that this was an insight. This was an insight. Because what's happening here is this little child, your child, is trying to become like a real human being that knows how to go to the bathroom like a big, you know, big girl. And so as they're exploring and testing, the question was, how can Kimberly Clark support that growth and development? How can they support that deeper needs that the child has and the parent has through technology? Reinventing toilet paper, which they did, which is kind of an interesting innovation. I'm going to show it to you right now. Cottonelle came out. Now, this might sound a little hokey, but I'm going to kind of bring this to life a little bit. The little kid goes to the bathroom. They pull enough toilet paper down to, through the paw prints, all the way, kind of like the road you just saw. Go down the road of paw prints, up to the doggy, then you pull it off. Somebody out there, some technologist figured out exactly how much you need. I don't know who that was, but they did it, okay? They did it. And this is how you take an insight that is really about how do I as a parent encourage the development of my child, the potty training of my child, which is really important, you might remember, and connect that to okay, let's figure out how to print this on paper in a certain amount, create some bare breaks. It's a technology solution at the same time. So I'm gonna to talk to you about other ways you can think about incremental to disruptive technology, creating a culture of innovation, and I'm gonna bring this to life in a number of different examples. So the first thing is, you know, there's innovations out there, it's everywhere. We hear about, you know, kind of all the different innovations you see up here. And I want to just ask you, if you could humor me for a moment, and just look at these things. You know, you got Netflix, Cirque du Soleil, iPad, iPhone, the Wii. These are all kind of big breakthroughs out there. I want you to yell out some of the innovations that you think are, that you like, that are breakthroughs to you, or that are important in your lives. Maybe you opened them, some were in the box. What do you got for me? Just yell it out. Microwave, iPhone, Fitbit, Fitbit. Backup camera. the what? Backup camera, Backup camera on a car, yeah. What else you got for me? Swiffer, DVR, GPS, great, great, great. Now, some of mine, I got them right here, some of mine are Pop Rocks. You guys know what Pop Rocks are? Pop Rocks, so just grab some Pop Rocks here. I'm gonna <laughs> throw some out at you. Get some, get some pop rocks going out in the room. There you go. We'll get some over here. Okay, I don't know if I can throw that far. Let's see what we can do. There you go. We got one more. Oh, a couple more out here. Now, let me just ask, is there anyone who's never had pop rocks before? I'm just curious. Anyone never have pop? You've never had pop rocks? Can you please come up here? Just come walk, walk over. Yeah, come here. Come here. Come here. Get up. Get up. Come back, come over here. Come here. Come on, come on up here, right here. All right. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Innovation is about risk taking, Mary. Okay. So, so come over here, come over here. Just go right here. 
Now I want you to stand facing the audience. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. Just take, just take this little package, it's small. Just, just pour it all in your mouth and let it, <laughs> let it sit there on your tongue and just percolate just for like 10 seconds or so. Just pour it all in there. Yeah. Just pour it in. Just pour the whole thing in. You gotta have the whole thing, the whole thing. All right, now let it just, let it just sit there. Let's just sit there. Okay, let's kind of moosh it around. Okay, now, mm. open up, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary. You were a good spark. Give her a hand. Okay, so, you know, that's kind of a fun thing we just did, but if you think about it, when I was a kid and I first tried Pop Rocks, that was my first experience of trying, experiencing a product in an experience that made me think I didn't know candy could do that. Which is fundamentally about challenging assumptions. Mary now knows candy can do that. Does anyone have a Coke for Mary? She can wash it down. Uh, the, the idea around innovation is finding solutions that challenge our assumptions about what we thought possible. The Pop Rock is just a simple example of that. There's a lot of other examples of that. And we're inundated these days with the whole concept of innovation. So there's never been more resources out there. So this is from the Wall Street Journal last year. 33,000 plus, the number of times the word innovation has shown up in an annual report in the Fortune 1000. 255 books with the word innovation written in their titles in a three month period. We are inundated with innovation. Never before have we had so much knowledge and resources about the, the topic, so shouldn't we have it right? Shouldn't we all just know how to do it? Create a culture of innovation, create disruptive innovations? Well, we know it's important more than ever because we've seen the casualties of when you don't innovate. You have an amazing resource here, 1,000 plus people who are focused on innovation, plus all your marketing, of course. But look at these companies. Borders, out of business. Blockbuster, out of business. Encyclopedia Britannica, what's that? What do all these, think about it, what do all these companies have in common? There's, there's this common experience here. Just think about it. There's an important lesson, a very important lesson. Border, Blackberry, Blockbuster, Britannica. Never start a company with the letter B <laughs> is the first big lesson here. Okay, so you've jumped over the B. Good job, you're, you're there. All right. But there is a, there is a dynamic that, uh, seriously, there is a dynamic that comes into play. How do we expand that view? How do we look into the future? How do we look at those trends, those opportunity spaces, those amplifiers, so that we can see things that others aren't seeing, maybe within Colgate, but especially with the competition, so that we can innovate around those. And that's really what creating a culture of innovation is about. So how do you do that on an ongoing, sustainable basis? So, there's a challenge with that though. I mean, if you look at Apple, which consistently ranks as the most innovative company in the world every year by various surveys, you've got their CEO basically saying there's no formula for innovation. There is no formula. It is an art and not a science. So I don't know, I don't know that I necessarily agree with it because they've, at least recently, they've created that formula or some principles for it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, I'm going to kind of distill many, many years of working with across companies and, and kind of research and the writing that I do into a few principles that I think if you kind of look at, and you're doing a lot of these already, but if you look at these things, they're the things that are really the principles that underlie creating a culture of innovation. The first piece is actually, I think Pat said it, expand your focus. You know, the question is, how do you, how do, you do that? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, expand your focus. The next thing you do is you fall in love with problems, not solutions. And I'll talk to you what I mean by that. 
Um, and then you've got to disrupt yourself. You've got to make sure that those things that are right in front of you, those color changes, you're a, you, you build your muscle memory to see and not ignore. And that's what I mean by disrupt yourself. So I'm going to share with you these three principles and examples and, and techniques to deal with each of these. OK, so let me just ask you a question. If you had to choose to be either Kodak or Fujifilm, who would you be? How many of you would be Kodak? Raise your hands. 20 of you. How many would be Fujifilm? How many don't, don't want to be either of these companies? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. So probably because you know that last year, Kodak, an iconic brand, filed for bankruptcy. It's just like those B companies. Okay, Bankruptcy. Fujifilm, same starting point 15 years ago as Kodak. Today, $15 billion market cap. Same starting point. What did they do? I'm going to share with you just kind of how they expanded their focus. So the idea was that they were in film. Well, they've innovated what it means to be in film. So now they have digital cameras. They actually have 3D cameras. They actually have paper that you can print. has 3D images on it. So they've innovated their core business to take things to the next level. So they're still in photography, I guess you could say. But what they've also done is they've pushed out. They've pushed out into adjacencies. What they looked like 15 years ago is not what they look like today. They have, they knew they were good with lenses. So they created television cameras. They got into the media of capturing film through digital tape and, and media cards. They went into large format printing. Then they realized that they have other capabilities. They have capabilities around the technology itself. So they got into other types of media like heat sensitive labeling that changes color if, if there's a contamination around uh, temperature. Other types of uh, chemical, uh, chemical uh, uh, chemicals as well as they got into candy wrappers because they were good with film and wrapping things. So they've, they've really looked at What's their core business and how do they keep expanding their focus and pushing out and pushing out and exploring and, and innovating so they can continue to grow that business? So I'm going to share with you some of the other techniques to do that, but that Fujifilm could be like Kodak, but they, they're not because Kodak had a single bet. They tried to get into printers and ink because they hired the guy from HP who ran the ink business. Fujifilm diversified and really looked at all the different options and all their technology capabilities and looked at how they could push out. How many of you have been to IKEA? IKEA? A number of you. Okay, so IKEA has a catalog. IKEA also has an app on the iPad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears here. All right, you're seeing my iPad. Now, okay. So you're going to see everything that I'm seeing on my iPad. So if I scroll up, there, there, I'm going to scroll up. OK. So what I can do, you see this little scan and discover button, top right. I'm going to click scan and discover. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a little window. And you can see, everybody wave. Everybody wave. See, you can see yourselves out here. But what you can also do is you can also go to the catalog. And you can go down to the catalog. And you can go over a page. And it'll say 3D. And if I hit yes, I want 3D, then it will allow me to pick. I'm going to pick this couch here. And what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to go down here. <laughs> I'm going to put that couch on the stage, blow it up, maybe move it around a little bit. What do you think? Does this look good for our panel session later? OK. Pat, you want to come up here and lie down on the couch for me? <laughs> All right. So IKEA is not a technology company. They are in the business, what they, what they call, we help you tell stories about your room. Every room has a story to tell. So the idea is that they've used technology another innovation amplifier, to essentially allow, say, my wife to 
take a look at the catalog, place the furniture in the room that we want to have it placed into, see what it looks like. I didn't show it to you, but you can take a photo of that image and then uh, share it through Facebook, email, whatever. So essentially, they're creating the ability for you to kind of have that experience of what that furniture, the story that their furniture will tell in your room before you buy it. So interesting use of technology. And <coughs> this, uh, this has kind of gone viral. There's a lot of kind of videos out there of people doing it. My question to you is, how can you possibly use this? It's in pushing your thinking about looking at things that the IKEA catalog that you don't think, how does this relate to us? And tying it back in, broadening your focus, and then linking it back in. And you know, there may or may not be ideas here, but the idea is that if you're constantly doing that, as you look at the world, you're gonna come up with some cool stuff that probably other people who aren't doing that, like your competition, um, won't. So that's expanding your focus. When I think about culture, culture are really those unwritten rules, those values, those norms that tell us what to do, our behavior. So you can have an innovative culture that has norms and values that reinforce the kind of behavior that leads to testing and trial and error and not worrying about failure. Or you can have one that says you want that, but then the actual values are the ones that are kind of unwritten that stifle it out. So I'm gonna share with you a couple strategies that you can do to kind of create the momentum in your organization, just very simple things, to start to really start to create the focus, the broadened focus, as well as the you know, focusing in on the problems and not worrying about the solution and kind of the iteration uh, that's required for innovation. So you know, the whole notion here is we want to disengage autopilot. Disengage autopilot. So it's not easy because when I was doing a, um, when I was writing my book, I went to Amazon and I, I use a lot of, um, I use this notion of surprise. So when we tried Prop Rocks, there's an element of surprise there because it challenges assumptions. Well, I decided to do a, a search on Amazon for business books with surprise in their titles. 100% of them. How do you avoid, minimize, prevent, reduce surprises in business? But you guys want surprises. That's what you need to do. So, you know, business says no surprises. Wall Street doesn't want surprises. No one wants surprises. But you've got to build in the ability to discover, surprise yourself, look for things you didn't expect in order to come up with some of these ideas. And so, it's all about kind of trying on that crazy hat and doing, and doing something new. So here's some strategies that other companies use. Um, one of them is really getting close to the customer. It's kind of a no-brainer, the consumer. Um, Intuit does something called Follow Me Homes, which you know, I know a lot of CPG companies do that too. You just go, you know, go in the environment of the consumer. Observe them, like Kimberly Clark did with that toilet paper. Um, the other kind of interesting thing is uh, what they do, though, is what they call customer office hours. Now, what this is is that they actually have asked everyone in their entire company um, to innovate. So literally everybody, from the HR group to, to finance to legal as well, um, innovate. And so in order to innovate, what they do is they, they want to have what they, they call customer office hours, where they actually, if you're, if you're a... a technologist or an engineer and you're working on an idea, you need validation or input from customers to know that it's good. These can be internal customers or external customers. They bring in external customers once a month. Kind of a set, set like this, they come up, they just sit here, and people who are working on anything can just be out there and interact with them. There's no agenda. You come with your ideas. You're essentially making the customer available to those who are innovating on a regular basis so that there's a constant interplay of insights, ideas, what do you think about that, what do you think about this, would this work, would that work, What's, what are you doing, and you know, what problems do you have over here, and it's this constant dialogue around customer insights, direct customer insights. So that's one thing, and it's really about uncovering those pain points. Simplify while adding benefits. Is anyone addicted to the Nutribullet like I am? 
A, a few of you, yeah. So the neutral bullet is a, you could say it's a blender, but basically it's, it's a cup, and all you do is you, you put stuff in it, you screw it on, you flip it over, on, so that's up, the cup is upside down there with the stuff in it, and you turn it on, it blends it up, makes your smoothie, you take off the cup, and the cup is actually, the, the, the holder for all the stuff is actually the cup you drink out of. So, it's, and then when you wash it, you just stick everything, including the blade, in the dishwasher. So, it's just a blender, but they have simplified the whole process so that essentially you've got the cup, you just stick it on there, you drink it, you're done. So, they've simplified things while adding features. I mean, how many blenders are cups? So, essentially, the idea is that as you think about the experiences you're trying to provide people, simple is a really good thing, but as you simplify, there are opportunities to add benefits uh, at the same time. Um, and then measure what matters. You know, as you think about innovation, you kind of, you get what you measure to a certain extent. So if, think about what you're trying to get in your own group as well as overall and for the company. Um, so global technology as well as Colgate. What do you, what is, the, at the end of the day, what do you want to see? Is it in-market revenue? Is it new technology? What is it? And really focus on that. You can have different levels of that as well. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to leave you with is really reinforcing your innovation values. I saw your innovation values coming into this meeting. You've got them. I think it's great. Today you're going to talk a lot about your culture. These are Facebooks. Do not be like Facebook or Google or Apple. I'm going to leave you with my recommendation. Be like yourselves on steroids. Okay? Leverage your strengths. That's really where you need, where innovation happens. Don't try to be like those kind of untouchable innovation icons from Silicon Valley. You read a lot about them, but be like yourself on steroids. Thank you.